Hey guys, welcome to this vlog. So what is the most important company today? I'm recording this in August 2019. What company is the most important today for developers? Which company should you pay attention to? Now, this was somewhat a hard choice on my part. Anyway, I'll get to the point. It's Microsoft. Now, the reason I believe Microsoft is the one you're going to keep your eye on is because of the Microsoft management that came into place what, eight, nine years ago, where with the new management coming in, they got rid of Steve Ballmer, they brought in this new guy, and they've changed their thinking at Microsoft. Microsoft now acts like more uh, like a smaller company. So instead of, as somebody described in an article I was reading uh, recently where they were talking about Microsoft, Instead of thinking of Microsoft as this giant, huge battleship that is, uh, moves around quite slowly and takes a long time to turn, Microsoft, about eight, ten years ago, something like that, they decided to change their internal structure to be more like a fleet of smaller battleships, of smaller cruise ships that can move around very quickly and respond to market forces. In the 1990s, Microsoft was very much this monolithic, huge company that thought about defending Windows. They, in their, the corporate culture was defend Windows. Windows was the cash cow, and they did anything they could to defend Windows positions and um, attacking web browsers, uh, trying to prevent web technology from evolving, uh, emphasizing their technology stack and trying to hurt like Java, for example, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they were thinking in, in a very old school way, Microsoft was. Now with the new CEO, who, uh, whose name I forget at this point in time, you just look it up, he changed the way in which they think. And now Microsoft has embraced open source, has embraced opening up tools expanding, not trying to protect Windows. So they're coming out with some very good products and they're out there wanting to support the larger development ecosystem, regardless of the language you use, regardless of the platform that you are on. So Visual Studio Code has come out recently. Uh, Python has, uh, Python, Microsoft has embraced Python. Uh, they're into the cloud services. So. They have amazing development tools. Now, depending on your taste, you may prefer JetBrains tools versus Microsoft. But overall, I think they are of a major player to pay attention to because they're moving in the right direction. Remember, I, something I've talked about in previous videos, open always beats closed. Now, if you look at Apple, they uh, built their company over the last 10 years or so on iPhone. And now everybody knows that the uh, all smartphone sales are starting to fall off or plateau. And now slowly, slowly, Apple's looking to get into services. But the developments end of their business, uh, Swift, iOS, etc. That's it's important, but it's not first and foremost for Apple. You look at Oracle with Java. When Oracle bought Sun Microsystems, so that's a company open who created Java, they decided to set up licensing and close it down. Uh, they are saying, with regards to the programmer community, developer community, they're saying, if you want to use Java, you got to pay. So they're basically shutting Java off for small companies. I think they're just looking at their legacy business, meaning their enterprise or huge business install space. I'm sure they would deny that, but the moves basically that Oracle is making vis-a-vis -vis Java, and I mentioned Java because Java is such an important language still today, uh, number one and number two, they're kind of thinking in the old way, in a very uh, closed way, uh, Oracle is vis-a-vis -vis Java, and I think you're going to see, you, you know, if you're a Java programmer, you like Java, you're going to have job, jobs for 30 years, no question. But it's closing in on, on itself. Whereas Microsoft-based technology is opening up. They bought GitHub, they kept it you know, open. They bought uh, Minecraft, they're opening it up for training and software development. They, but you know, 
They're doing all kinds of stuff, but it's all about openness. Microsoft's all about openness. And I can tell you, going back to the 90s, in terms of development tools, Microsoft has always been either number one or in the top two in terms of putting out developer tools. They're really, really good at that. So, and they continue to be. Again, personal choice. You may prefer JetBrains versus uh, Microsoft, etc. But I'm just saying, if I was to pick a company in terms of which one you should pay attention to as a developer, I would definitely be picking Microsoft. To close off this video, I just want to address a question. Somebody asked me, I've been asked a few times, Steph, why don't you do a, a, a tutorial walkthrough on Node or a tutorial walkthrough on Vue or on React, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I thought about that and uh, that might be something I would do uh, but I decided against it because, well, number one, if you know my philosophy, I believe that if you want to become an amazing coder, number one, you learn your fundamentals. Number two, with the fundamentals, you maybe do one or two tutorials. That's it. That's it. And then you go out there and you start working on real projects because in the reality of uh, learning software development, becoming a software developer, a lot of people believe, a lot of news believe uh, in this, in the fairy tale that's not true in terms of how it works. They think that they learn to code by doing projects, project-based tutorials. I'm going to build a Twitter clone with Node or a Twitter clone, you know, that kind of stuff. And then they think they're going to come into a job having done a, a bunch of tutorials and they'll know everything and they just sit there and do what they learn. It doesn't work that way. The way it works, especially in the first few years, is you do your fundamentals and you've got to be properly trained in the fundamentals so you understand the fundamentals, the architectures, the framework around all the code. You understand all that very well. You understand the mechanisms like the request response model, uh, the nature of web application development. You know, at the end of the day, 99% of web apps are just data in, data out, massage the data coming in through forms. And that's pretty much it. You're working typically with three data types most of the time, string most of the time, date some of the time, and int. That's pretty much it, right? That's on a very basic level. Um, yeah, so you learn your fundamentals, and then from there, when you're well-versed in the fundamentals, you can learn any technology that the job demands, because what you're going to find in your career that one job you may have to work with Vue, and then another job you'll be React, another job you're gonna be Node, another job you're gonna be Laravel, another job you're gonna do some, they're gonna say, we need you to do some Python, et cetera, et cetera. Now, if you're well trained in the fundamentals, for you to jump around like that is easy. You wanna be in that mindset as well, because you wanna be flexible and adaptable, which opens you up to many more jobs, you make much more money. Just like in martial arts, if you watch mixed martial arts, what the mixed martial arts uh, community figured out is that the key to being successful in the ring or in any fight, I can tell you as a bouncer, is not thinking, I'm going to become really great at jujitsu, or I'm going to become really great at Thai boxing, or I'm going to become really great at uh, boxing. No, no, no. The way you become very successful in the ring, in the fight, is you become a great grapp a good grappler or a great grappler, pretty good at striking, kicking, punching good at submissions, good at takedowns. You notice I'm not mentioning a martial arts style. I'm talking about the fundamentals. I'm reducing it down to the fundamentals. Same thing with music, right? If you're, if you're a great musician, you can pick up any instrument and play it fairly well. You can have a particular instrument that you're really good at, but you're going to be able to navigate the musical landscape because you have an understanding of scales and timing and rhythm and keys and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. When it comes to software development, it's the same thing. Once you have your fundamentals down, everything else becomes pretty approachable and easy. So instead of me building a, a, a tutorial, the, the 20th tutorial that you can get for free on YouTube on Node.js walkthrough or on Vue.js or on MongoDB, I teach the fundamentals. That's what's not out there. It's a little business lesson, by the way. When you get into business, what you want to do is you want to figure out what other people are not doing. You want to figure out what people are not doing and, crucially, what people need. Maybe nobody's interested in that, right? So 
you have to fi figure out in the marketplace what people are not doing, not providing, and finding something that the market needs. So I've identified a long time ago is that people, uh, there's no fun good fundamental training out there. It's not much. So that's what I bring to the table. When people learn the fundamentals, everything comes easy. That's why I don't bother with the projects. I teach the fundamentals, I put it together with business, my unique perspective. And then you go out there, and if you need to learn Node because the job demands it, go to YouTube, there's plenty of Node, walkthroughs, boom, boom, boom. It'll be easy for you. Because if you understand the server architectures, you understand basic programming, you understand HTML and CSS, you understand JavaScript, you'll be able to jump right into Node without too much difficulty. You don't, I don't need to put out that course. So that's why I uh, do what I do. That's why I bring to the table what I bring to the table. So uh, there you go. That's uh, one last thing. Somebody asked me about the, uh, that ending track, which I'm going to stick on this, where I have a view from my balcony of the city, and you got that music playing in the background. Well, A, the view is from my balcony. Uh, B, uh, the ending track is something I composed. I composed. I didn't play drums on my drum kit. I composed that song in uh, just GarageBand. That's it, just GarageBand, sat around, play with a bunch of instruments, boom, 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 put something together that I liked. I wanted to have my own original music. I didn't want to do what everybody else does on YouTube and just you know get some canned uh, piece of music. Um, I don't like copying. I like inventing, building upon what I see out there, but I don't like copying. So now I have my music that I produce. Uh, it's kind of, I mean, you're going to see more and more of it. It's my intro. It's, I, I just have a snippet of it. And it just gives it a little bit of a unique flavor to what I do here on YouTube. All right, that's it. We'll talk soon.